Hello and welcome to lecture 5 of the principle of relativity in Phys 1104. And in this lecture we're going to look at convertible kinetic energy, which is not the kinetic energy that a car has when it's got its roof down. Let's look at three very similar situations. Here we have identical cars about to crash into each other, and I've set it up so that there are three different situations with their velocities. So in situation one, car B is stationary and car A is coming at it at 30 meters per second. In situation two, car, cars A and B are coming at each other, each going at 15 meters per second, although that means there's a relative speed between them of 30 meters per second. And in situation three, they are going in the same direction, one at 20 meters per second and the other at 10 meters per second. Which of these is the most dangerous situation? I mean, they're all going to result in a crash. And let's say that all of the collisions are totally inelastic so that the cars stick together at the end. And so we can just talk about a final velocity in each case. And if you work through the totally inelastic collision, you come up with those values that I've listed on the screen there. What's going to happen is that kinetic energy is going to be converted into internal energy during this inelastic collision. And that is where the danger is, because that internal energy represents damage to the cars and the people in them, possibly. So it seems reasonable that the collision with the most kinetic energy should be the one that is the most dangerous. If you look at the kinetic energies of these three situations, this is what you come up with. You can calculate this yourself fairly easily. And this would suggest that situation one is the most dangerous, three is the second most dangerous, and two is the least dangerous. If you think about that, that doesn't make much sense. In situations one and two, the relative speeds, which intuitively ought to be the thing that really matters, are the same. And in situation three, the relative speed is much smaller. It's only 10 meters per second. So we would intuitively think situations one and two would be the most dangerous and would be about equally dangerous and situa situation three would be perhaps much less dangerous. If that's what you intuitively think, you're right. And to see it, you just have to look at the final kinetic energies. And note that the change in the kinetic energy in situations one and two is the same, but that there's only a very small change in the, in the kinetic energy in situation three. So the kinetic energy alone, the initial kinetic energy, was sort of misleading. One thing to realize is that situation two is in fact exactly the same as situation one, but viewed from the center of mass frame. And it's the simplest situation, particularly because the final kinetic energy is zero. So that suggests it may always be productive to think about collisions from the center of mass frame when we're trying to decide how much kinetic energy can get converted into internal energy. So just like last lecture, we spent a lot of our time transforming momentums from one frame into the zero momentum frame. What we need to do now is transform the kinetic energy into the zero momentum frame so we can get an idea of how we more easily calculate it to get insight into how much energy is convertible into internal energy. So here is the kinetic energy for a system of objects all moving along the x-axis, right? And we have an object one, and an object two, and so on. And we know how to convert this because the inertias don't change, and so now we just have to transform each of the x components of velocity into the z frame. Now notice that we have a bunch of nearly identical terms, so let's just see how one of them expands out.
So that's how one will expand out, and all the rest will expand out the same way. So if we collect all the VAZX terms, we're going to have one term that looks like this. Then we can collect all of the terms of this form. The common factor in them is VAZX. And so I'm going to stick that common factor at the end of the term. And finally, these terms are all different, except they're all of the same form. So notice a few things. This is just the total inertia of the system. This is just the sum of the kinetic energies of all the objects in the system in the, in the zero momentum frame. But the thing that's the biggest simplification is here. This piece is the sum of the momentums but it's the sum of the momentums in the zero momentum frame. And so we know by definition that this term is zero. So that's gone. So all of a sudden things radically simplify. And we have one term like this. And then we have a term like this, which is the sum of the kinetic energies in the zero momentum frame. So I'm just going to call that the kinetic energy in the zero momentum frame of the whole system. Now let's look at the meaning of what we've got. This first part is a kinetic energy that is just like an object of inertia equal to the whole system moving along at the velocity of the center of mass frame. And so you can think of this as the kinetic energy of the center of mass of the system. And so that's what we're going to call it. We're going to call it the kinetic energy of the center of mass. And then we have this piece, which I've called K, the kinetic energy in the Z frame of the system. For an observer in the zero momentum frame, this is the kinetic energy of the system that they would measure. Well, that's really the part of the kinetic energy that is due to relative speeds, relative speeds between the objects in the system. Whereas this piece is really to do with the motion of the observer relative to the system. So in other words, this piece here is the only part that is available to be converted into internal energy. And so from the point of view of what the system is able to do within itself, this is the important part. And so we will call it also, we can call it the, the Z frame kinetic energy of the system, but it is also the convertible kinetic energy. Okay, we've essentially got what we wanted. We wanted a transformation that would give us the kinetic energy as measured in the zero momentum frame, or if you prefer, the center of mass frame, and that is what this is. But there's an easier way to calculate it, and it'll take just a little bit more work. So first of all, I'm going to just flip the equation around to solve for that convertible kinetic energy. Now, to simplify things, I'm going to specialize to the situation of just two objects in the system. We can do this for more, but the algebra gets much nastier. So 
I can now write this out in full fairly easily because that kinetic energy in our original frame of the system is going to be like this. And I'm going to omit the A subscripts. And also I'm going to note that everything here I have velocities squared, which just gives the same as a speed squared. And so I don't need to worry about components anymore. There is the kinetic energy of the system in the original frame. And now the kinetic energy of the center of mass. And I will just write this as the center of mass speed squared, which is the same as the center of mass velocity squared. Now there is a whole lot of algebra that we could do, and which I'm not going to, for several reasons. First of all, the algebra is just a little yucky. And second of all, it actually involves a vector manipulation that we haven't seen yet called a dot product. So I'm going to leave it for later in the course. But I'll just say, if you replace this with what we know it must be, and then do a lot of rearrangement and a little bit of vector manipulation magic, you end up coming up with this remarkably simple expression for our convertible kinetic energy. Where I will note that this is the relative speed, which is what we figured should be the important thing in collisions. And this quantity here, we call the reduced mass, which we represent with the Greek letter mu. And the thing to note about this expression is that we can calculate it entirely using things that we knew without transforming into the center of mass frame. And so it's very easy to calculate this. And I'll just say that this thing here, the reduced mass, is going to be very important for some of you, the chemistry students, this is going to be very important in spectroscopy. It will show up all over the place in the quantum mechanics that you do to look at vibrational and rotational spectra of molecules. So now we can return to our three situations with the cars and see how we could have got our answer very easily using these expressions. So first of all, the reduced mass is the same in all three cases because it's the same pair of cars, and so it is just note the units, the kilograms take out the kilograms, but there's still one kilogram left in the numerator, and this one comes out to 500 kilograms. Notice it's smaller than the mass of either car, there's a reason this is called the reduced mass. Now that we know that, we can easily get the convertible kinetic energy. Notice that in situation two, we have the same reduced mass and the same relative speed, and so we will get exactly the same answer in line with our expectations about the level of danger of those two collisions. Whereas in three, we get quite a different answer. If you look back at the beginning of the video where I did this, you will see that the amount of kinetic energy that was converted to internal was only 2.5 times 10 to the 4 joules for this one instead of 2.25 times 10 to the 5 joules for these two.